OptSeq is a tool that will allow you to customize your event-related fMRI experiment for optimal efficiency. In other words, it will try to help you order the presentation of conditions or stimuli to the participant in order to most efficiently estimate a beta weight for a given condition or for a given contrast if you have one that you're particularly interested in. So the first step is to download OptSeq. It's O-P-T-S-E-Q, one word. Put that into Google and just click on the first hit that comes up, OptSeq. It should be pretty straightforward to download it. Uh, it's just a simple text file. It's an executable. And once you have it, put it inside one of the path directories that you've set. So for me, I've put it in my home slash abin directory. And if I grab OpSeq, we should see it returned. So I know it's within my abin directory, which means that I can type in OpSeq2 from anywhere within my shell and it will execute. In this case, I haven't supplied any arguments, so it just gives me the help. All right, so let's go through a very simple example of using OpSeq. So OpSeq needs a few essential parameters. It needs the number of time points, it needs the repetition time, and it needs a series of the events or conditions that you have in your experiment. So let's do a hypothetical experiment which has, say, 160 time points. Sorry. And for the number of time points, you type in NTP. And by the way, they have a lot of this. They have all of this on their help file and also in some of the exercises on the OPSEQ website. But let's say the number of time points is 160. And the TR is 2. Notice that each of these options is prefixed by two dashes two hyphens. Lastly, we're going to put in the PSD window. PSD stands for Post Stimulus Display, and it wants a minimum and a maximum. So, for example, what is the minimum amount of time that you would like in seconds after the presentation of each condition? So, let's say, in this example, let's say that there can be one condition following another without any interstimulus interval, no time between presentation of conditions. And the maximum that I want is, say, 12 seconds between conditions, right? And the last argument, the third number you'll type in is the TR explicitly. Okay. And notice this slash here means I want to continue on the next line without wrapping around from the edge. All right, so now we supply a list of uh, events, right? Or, yeah, so, or conditions. So the first one, let's say this is one of those clinical studies where they present you weird and disgusting IAPS photos because they're really into that stuff, but they also present things like attractive pictures and neutral pictures because they want to have contrasts about what differential neural activations do you see in different parts of the brain for, say, disgusting pictures versus attractive pictures. So, in this example, let's say that our first condition is disgusting picture. I can spell this. Disgusting pick, let's say. All right. First argument that comes after each uh, event is the TR, or the, sorry, not the TR, but the duration of that event. All right. So, each disgusting pick is going to be on the screen for two seconds. And we're going to have 20 repetitions of this event. So there are going to be 20 disgusting pictures in a block of this experiment. The second event is going to be something called attractive pick. This can be something like uh, a puppy. It can be an attractive girl. Something like that. Flowers, unicorns, rainbows. Whatever floats your boat. Same thing. We have attractive pictures that will last for two seconds and let's say that there are 15 instances of attractive pictures in this experiment. Lastly there are neutral pictures so things like a a pen or a sh I don't know I'm thinking of writing utensils for some reason I was about to say paper um I don't know anything anything that's really neutral I can't think of anything right now 
but let's say that that also lasts for two seconds each condition each time that the neutral picture is presented is for two seconds and let's say that there are 30 instances of a neutral picture per block all right lastly we want to optimize this let's say for a contrast of disgusting pictures versus attractive pictures so I type in dash dash EVC so a contrast of these events and it wants a list of weights so let's say I want to optimize it for a contrast of disgusting pics relative to attractive pictures so in this case I'm going to type 1 negative 1 and it needs a weight for neutral pictures we're going to say that that is 0 does that make sense how each of these are lining up so this one lines up with this disgusting pic, this one lines up with attractive pic, and the third one lines up with our third uh, event, which is neutral pictures. All right, just a couple more options here. There is n keep. So what OpSeq will do is it will generate multiple optimal sequences of presentation of stimuli or conditions. And we only want to keep a few of the top schedules, the ones that are the most efficient and we can select from any of those. So let's say we want to keep th the three best ones. All right, lastly, what is the output stem that we want? So it's going to generate a bunch of output files and we want to be able to label those appropriately. Let's call it iApps. And lastly, and search how many schedules we want to look through. Let's say a thousand. Now, OpSeq recommends that you use at least 10,000, but it's very quick, so doing 10,000, 100,000, even a million, you know, you can take a short break, come back, and it will be done. Okay, so, right then, it's done. It's already gone through a thousand iterations, and it's selected the three best ones, optimized for efficiency. Okay, so these three top schedules are listed right here. IAPS, 001, 002, 003.par. There's also a log telling us what we wrote to execute this script and also what it did when it was generating those random schedules and then iapps.sum which will give you more details about the efficiency of each of these top three schedules. So let's look within iapps001.par. All right, so there are five columns here. First column, it's time. Now recall I had 160 time points and I had a TR of 2 seconds, so that's 320 seconds or 5 minutes and uh, 20 seconds. Okay, 318, but there's another TR after that. Alright, so the second column is a code for which condition or stimulus was presented. So remember, the first stimulus I gave it, the first condition I gave it was disgusting pictures. And you also see that at the very end here in this fifth column, right? And this next column, the third column, tells you how long was this on for? How long was this condition up for? In this case, each of our events are two seconds, so each time a disgusting pick, an attractive pick, or a neutral pick is up, it should be for only two seconds. I'm not totally clear what the fourth column is, but I don't think it matters too much, because it's the same for everything. All right. So, as we go down, you also see these null trials, and they're coded with a zero in column two. A null could be something like a fixation cross, it could just be a blank screen for time between trials. It's modeling uh, essentially things of no interest, okay? Usually, like say an SPM, this gets modeled into the baseline. Uh, in AFNI, it gets modeled into the baseline explicitly, and that can be formed as a separate regressor. But this is just a null condition that fills in all the space between your events of interest when there is some time between them. Okay, So you'll notice that sometimes the null regressor will occur for more than two seconds. It can be, say, six seconds. It can be up for four seconds or eight seconds. Right. So it doesn't have to be two seconds like the rest of these other regressors. All right. So scroll down, pretty similar thing. It's trying to randomize the order of these in order to make the most efficient design possible. We're going to do one more thing here. So 
it's the same deal when you look at the second and third schedules. There are just a couple other options that you can choose from. All right. Okay, so within iapps.sum, which was generated as a summary file, you can see some more of the technical information about what you put in there and also the output that was generated. So a lot of this is just reforming, reformulating what you wrote when you executed the command. So there are three events, how many reps there are, and so on, uh, contrast matrix, and then we have a schedule of the efficiencies, right? So the top schedule, the IAPS-001.par, that is the optimization schedule with the highest amount of efficiency. Now there are a couple different metrics. There are things like how much error is due to counterbalancing, what is the variance reduction factor, so in other words, how much is the variance of each condition minimized relative to the surrounding noise, and a few others which you can look about more in the help. Okay, but combining across all these different metrics of reducing variance and increasing the efficiency of the design, it's lumped into this number here under the efficiency column. So a few more details, but those are the main things to know. And that is, in a nutshell, how you use OptSeq. And if you need to do a brief refresher, they have some exercises online on the OptSeq website, which are very useful. Now, in regards to OptSeq, it can potentially lead to ordering effects. If you think about it, if you're using the same schedule for the same subjects, and it doesn't vary from subject to subject, is that a confound? Well, probably not, but there is a possibility that it could be leading to an ordering effect. Maybe. And also recall that there's another method of doing this, which is in AFNI, where you actually will use the output from one of your sample experiments. So say you have a timing file, you've run through an experiment, and you've randomly selected when to present a stimulus, and also you've randomly selected different jitters between your events, and then you can feed that into one of the AFNI commands, which will allow you to estimate the efficiency. And we'll talk about that in a later tutorial, but these are two tools. OpSeq is one of the primary ones that you can use in order to optimize your design. So I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.